When the U.S. charged into World War II, the rank structure of the U.S. Marine Corps was familiar to what we know today, but not identical. Today, we're covering the complete rank structure of the U.S. Marines during the war, featuring the insignia, how these ranks would fit into the overall organization of a unit, and changes over time. To start, we'll go over the enlisted ranks. It should be noted that when we talk about the billets or positions that these ranks were meant to hold, in practice, such positions were often held by Marines holding ranks one, two, or even more levels below what was officially authorized. Marine enlisted rank insignia was worn in three variations. Gold on red for the dress blues uniform, green on red for the winter service uniform and overcoat, and green on khaki for the summer service uniform. Enlisted rank insignia were not sewn onto combat utilities or dungarees, but could sometimes be applied with black ink and a stencil. During World War II, the U.S. Armed Forces enlisted rank structure was limited to seven pay grades, with the seventh grade being the lowest ranking and the first grade being the highest. For the sake of brevity, for non-commissioned officers, we will only be covering the line ranks that held command roles, ordnance ranks, and major technical rank variations. If you want more branch-specific rank variations for cooks, paymasters, etc., there's a good resource on the topic linked in the description. At grade 7 was Private, the lowest rank with no rank insignia. Above that, at grade 6 was Private First Class, represented by a single chevron. Organizationally, these two ranks were employed in similar positions, with Private First Class essentially being senior privates who received about 40 bucks more a year. The first non-commissioned officer rank was Corporal at grade 5, represented by two chevrons. Prior to mid-1943, corporals were employed as squad leaders but filled a wide range of positions such as company clerk, signal corporal, and other entry-level NCO positions. Represented by three chevrons was Sergeant at grade 4. Prior to mid-1943, sergeants typically filled the billets of section leader, supply and property sergeant, and weapons company armor, among others. At grade 3 is where we start seeing some divergence in insignia and terminology between the different trades. The line and ordnance rank was platoon sergeant, represented by three chevrons and one rocker. As the name implies, they were typically a platoon's senior most enlisted man, acting as a second in command and advisor to the platoon commander. The main exception was in 81mm mortar platoons, where the senior most enlisted man was a gunnery sergeant, and platoon sergeants acted as section chiefs. The technical equivalent was the staff sergeant, represented by three chevrons and a horizontal stripe. Examples of where staff sergeants worked included the regimental communications platoon as section chiefs, and in infantry battalions as senior mess sergeants. Next, at grade 2 there was even further divergence. The line leadership rank at this pay grade was the first sergeant, at this time represented by three stripes and two rockers. They were the senior most enlisted man in a company, with the title first sergeant simultaneously being an appointment in addition to a rank. In ordnance, the rank was called a gunnery sergeant, but carried the same insignia. Prior to 1943, they were typically the most senior men in an 81mm mortar platoon and held ranks as senior munitions personnel at the regimental level. The main technical equivalents were the technical sergeant and supply sergeant represented by three chevrons and two horizontal stripes. One example of a technical sergeant billet was the signal electrician in the infantry battalion and communications platoon. In terms of line ranks, the sergeant major was the highest enlisted rank at grade 1, represented by three chevrons and three rockers. They were typically the highest ranking enlisted personnel at the battalion level and higher, Meanwhile, for ordnance, the equivalent was the master gunnery sergeant, typically acting as a senior enlisted in weapons companies. For technical trades, this level included the master technical sergeant, paymaster sergeant, and quartermaster sergeant. These were typically found at the regimental level, with a master technical sergeant acting in the regimental HQ's communication platoon, a paymaster sergeant in the regimental pay section, and a quartermaster sergeant in the regimental supply section. Now there are a few changes made in 1943. The squad leader billet was elevated to sergeant while corporals became assistant squad leaders. However, sergeants typically remained as section leaders in mortar and LMG sections specifically. 
Additionally, a gunnery sergeant was added to each rifle company headquarters in addition to the pre-existing first sergeant to attend to munitions, logistics, and the company headquarters bazookas. In terms of the actual rank structure, the primary change was the movement of the first sergeant rank to grade 1 as an acknowledgement of the leadership position's importance. From February of 1943 to February of 1944, the first sergeant would be represented by the same three chevrons and three rockers as the sergeant major and master gunnery sergeant. Only in February of 1944 was the diamond shape insignia added under the chevrons to denote first sergeant specifically. Now for warrant officers. Warrant officers were technical or trade experts focused primarily on administrative matters within certain branches. Few and far between, there were only four within an infantry regiment, including an ordnance officer, quartermaster clerk, and two pay clerks. They wore the same uniform as commissioned officers. Their insignia was worn as pins on the epaulets of the dress blues, winter service uniform, and overcoat, on the collar of their summer service uniforms and utilities, and on their garrison cap. A miniature version of the insignia was typically used for the collars and the garrison cap. During World War II, there were two warrant officer grades. Before 1943, the lower warrant officer grade included the Marine Gunner, Quartermaster Clerk, and Pay Clerk depending on the branch. At this time, they were only represented by the insignia of their specific branch. Meanwhile, the second grade of warrant officers included the Chief Marine Gunner, Chief Quartermaster Clerk, and Chief Pay Clerk. In addition to their department insignia, they were also represented by a gold bar with a blue tab. In October of 1943, the warrant officer grades were simplified with the different specialist names being replaced with warrant officer for the lower grade and commissioned warrant officer for the higher grade. Warrant officers continued to be issued a warrant from the Secretary of the Navy, while commissioned warrant officers received commissions from the President, same as regular officers. Warrant officers were represented by a gold bar with a red stripe, while commissioned warrant officers were represented by a gold bar with a red tab. With the exception of the Marine Gunner, all warrant officers lost their branch insignia. Now for officers. The lowest officer grade was second lieutenant, represented by a gold bar, followed by first lieutenant, represented by a silver bar. The two lieutenant grades would have been authorized for platoon commander and company executive officer positions, although due to shortages, it was not uncommon for lieutenants to fill company commander positions as well. Next up was Captain, represented by two silver bars. They typically commanded rifle companies and were executive officers for weapons companies. Meanwhile, Majors were represented by Golden Oak Leaves. They were typically battalion and regimental weapons company commanders, as well as battalion executive officers. Lieutenant Colonels were represented by Silver Oak Leaves and typically commanded battalions and acted as regimental executive officers. Full colonels were represented by a Silver Eagle. They typically commanded regiments and would serve on the Divisional Chiefs of Staff. Brigadier Generals were represented with one Silver Star. They were typically Assistant Divisional Commanders and also filled staff positions at the Corps level, such as sitting on the Chiefs of Staff of an Amphibious Corps. When Marine Brigades were formed, these were also typically commanded by a Brigadier General. Major Generals were represented by two Silver Stars. During and after the war, Major Generals typically commanded Marine Divisions, Marine Aircraft Wings, and Amphibious Corps, which consisted of multiple Marine Divisions. However, prior to early 1941, the Marine Corps also had no division size units. Before January 20th, 1942, Major General was the highest rank in the Marine Corps, with the Marine Corps Commandant, then designated Major General Commandant, sitting at this rank. Following January of 1942, the Commandant became a Lieutenant General with a new rank represented by three Silver Stars. A Lieutenant General also commanded the Field Army-sized Fleet Marine Force Pacific or FMF pack, which consisted of the 3rd and 5th Amphibious Corps among other units. Until March 21st, 1945, Lieutenant General was the highest rank in the Marine Corps until the grade of General was established. Represented by four stars, the rank was only to be held by the Commandant of the Marine Corps. So that's been the rank structure of the Marine Corps during World War II. As always, I'd like to give a shout out to our patrons. If you want to support us and get some perks, including exclusive wallpapers and a role in our Discord server, consider becoming a patron. Link is in the description. Thanks again everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.